Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today I'm going to be answering a few more of your questions, such as the collectability of the Rolex Explorer 2 40mm, uh, the turnograph, and a few chronograph questions. All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check, I'm wearing my Rolex OP39 Rhodium, uh, OP39 Rhodium dial. Uh, I just got back from a trip, and I've been using it as my travel watch. Really enjoy wearing it. But also, guys, heads up. Few cool watches at Delray Watches just came in. We got in a Grand Seiko Elegance with that beautiful cream dial. Absolutely gorgeous. We got in a blue dial Omega Aquaterra, full box and papers, and a Breguet Classique white gold with the hand guilloche dial, one of the most elegant watches I've ever seen in my life, all at delraywatch.com, link in the description below. So anyway guys, these are your questions that you asked on my Instagram account that's at Federico Talks Watches. Occasionally you'll see a Q&A picture pop up and that's when you can ask your questions. So do follow me there. And I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just reading them off the piece of paper. So let's get started. Jonathan Burasa MTL said, Hey Fed, this may be a dumb question. No such thing, Jonathan, I'm happy to help. If you start your chrono and then stop it, let's say midway, does it put any resistance or strain on the mechanism if you don't reset it? Because I like to see the Omega logo on my moon watch. So basically, if you start your chronograph, let it tick, then you stop it, but you don't reset it, does it hurt the chrono? No, no it doesn't. Um, it can hurt the chrono on some chronographs to leave them running all the time. Uh, depends on the type of clutch the chronograph has. But no, it does not hurt to reset, to not reset the chronograph. What does hurt it as well is to start, stop, and reset it when there's no power reserve. That's no good. But what you described about starting the chrono, stopping it, and then not resetting it should do no harm. So enjoy your moon watch. Next one, fully mechanical. Hey, Fed, hope you're doing well at Delray. Thank you, buddy. Do you think the 36mm Datejust Turnograph will become more popular since it was discontinued in 2011? The Turnograph uh, is the rotating bezel Datejust. I do think it'll be more popular. Just like every Rolex when it's discontinued, it tends to go up a little bit. Will I think it'll be an icon or massively collectible? No, because it was never that popular. I think the size hinders it a little bit in the modern market. But do I think it's becoming more popular and certainly more expensive since it was discontinued? Yeah, absolutely. It's a cool little oddball watch. Definitely getting uh, more appreciated as time goes on. Watches and guns. Do you think the Rolex 16570 Polar Dial will ever go up in value and reach Submariner price? 16570 is Explorer 240mm. Yes, I do. In fact, they've already shot up in price like crazy. Whereas the Submariner has a million variations, there's only a few variations of the 40mm Explorer 2. That and I think the White Dial, which is very rare in a Rolex sports watch, only pretty much made in a couple of variations of the Explorer and a few other watches, um, make it an oddball. I think the Explorer 2 got no real love back in the day. When I was working retail, it was kind of like the sports Rolex nobody wanted, but it's shot up in value. And while I don't think it's an uncommon watch, I do think it'll end up matching some versions of the Submariner because it has really picked up steam over the years. Seaboy 1987. How does your Breguet Marine compare to your Gerard Perigol Laureato? Are they on the same level of watchmaking? That's a great question. Um, yes and no. The Breguet is more refined. The movement has more hand decoration. The dial is more decorated. The case has more attention to detail. Uh, I consider that a finer watch, but the GP has more complications, uh, has a sturdier case. And while it doesn't have all the hand flourishes of Breguet, it's a more complicated watch. I think Gerard Perigo is similar to Breguet, or can be similar to Breguet. They have a lower low end than Breguet, but their high end is very high like Breguet. But they, they start lower than, than Breguet does. Uh, but I do find the Marine to be a more refined watch. 
And I do find the Laureato to be a more worry-free wearing experience, if that makes any sense. Mr. Peterson says, hey, Fed, love your content. Thank you. Moving away from watches, are you a Formula One fan? If so, what's your favorite team who will win the championship? My money on the upcoming championship is on uh, Red Bull. Their new Honda engine is going to be great. Uh, who is my team? Well, I'm Italian, so I love Ferrari, obviously, uh, even though they've been awful. But I'm also kind of a fan of Renault. Big fan of Esteban Ocon, uh, especially since watching uh, the Netflix Drive to Survive series. I don't know. I just, I like that kid. Uh, I, you know, I wish him the best of luck. He seems very humble. And um, that's made me a Renault fan. Russ the Human says, if you were to price the current popular Rolex models according to their worth, how much would they cost? Uh, well, let's just talk about the sub uh, to make it easy. Uh, the sub would probably cost the same as a Planet Ocean. <laughs> so somewhere in the sixes or sevens. Uh, I consider the quality to be equal. Uh, it's more like the prestige and the uh, kind of faux scarcity that's bringing up the price, but they're, they're no better or no worse than, than an Omega. So I'd, I'd price them accordingly. Then last but not, la uh, last but not least, the fat gent, uh, a guy who's been watching your channel forever, he used to have a YouTube channel as well. Barry, thank you so much for your question. Big fan, by the way. He says, I haven't bought a watch to wear in ages. What do you think would get me back in the game? Barry, you know, a lot of people would say like, kind of pick something and collect it, like pick Rolex or Cartier. But honestly, brother, you shouldn't need to get back in the game. I mean, I know what you mean. Like, you know, you buy something and then you go down the rabbit hole. But I think you should do it exactly that way. Just pick something that you love the look of. Something that goes with the gut. Maybe not a collectible brand or not a brand you love. But if it's the watch that automatically sparks some kind of interest. So let's say, I don't know, Breitling Chronomat. Doesn't mean you have to buy only Brightlings, but get that watch, it first sparks your interest, and then you'll naturally fall back into the game. But don't buy something that just to get back into the game. I feel like the best watch to buy to wear is the watch you really actually like, no matter what other people think. That's just my two cents. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.